back, everyone. Congratulations, Ruth, on a well done performance. And we're also going to enter, uh, enter. we're going to um, welcome Janet into the space. So Ruth and Janet, please join us. I got Ruth. And do I have Janet? I'm sure I do. We'll just wait a second. Um, <clears throat> and for those of you who are uh, still with us, we'll do a little Q&A with, uh, with Janet and with Ruth Anderson, who uh, you might also recognize as Elizabeth from what we just witnessed here this evening. So let's just, let's start with you, Ruth. Oh, there's, there's <laughs> Janet. I got you both now. Awesome. Um, first of all, congratulations to the both of you. It's a really nice piece of work um, and something that I think probably resonates with many people in, in the audience tonight. Um, lots of stuff to unpack here, and I know we won't get to all of it. Um, and my brain works in a way where it's a little scattered in how my thoughts come through. So I'm just going to roll with it and honor my process. Um, Ruth, what I want to know sort of right off the top is this um, this this shamanic journey that Elizabeth is on, and the significance of this um, this voice, this sort of the the um, the character of the voice that comes in and guides through the process. What is that all about? Because I'm not I'm not overly familiar with with shamanic journeys, and so I'm hoping you can unpack that a little bit. So, if you may recall. Um, when Marv first helps Elizabeth open sacred space, mm -hmm. the direction of the West is symbolized by Otorongo, which is the jaguar. Mm -hmm. And the jaguar in the shamanic tradition is the character that helps us cross over the rainbow bridge is how it's put. So helps us get from this world to the alternative world, you might mm -hmm. say. So, so then that becomes the protectorate and the guide. Okay. Um, I do remember hearing that in the moment, but I don't think it's solidified for me that same way. So I'm really happy that you expanded on that a little bit, because again, you know, if you're not familiar with, um, you know, the constructs of the tradition, it, it can be easy to go, wait a second, there's a lot of information here. I have to go back and figure this out. So thank you for unpacking that because mm -hmm. it becomes really instrumental um, as the, as the 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 voice of the protector and the and the and the guide through this journey through Elizabeth's journey. Um, folks from the community, I will uh, offer you also the opportunity to ask questions. So I'm going to ask folks to use the raise your hand function, and I will keep my best eye possible open. And I know that uh, Donna and Rick in the background are also going to keep eyes open because we've got lots of participants tonight. So there's your offer folks. If you have questions of Ruth or uh, Janet this evening and um, or comments, please uh, let yourself be heard. Um, Janet, welcome to the space. Thank you so much um, for, for being here this evening. It's a real pleasure to, to have actors in spaces with us that can talk to us about the process. So first off, have you uh, are you a person that identifies with blindness yourself? No. No, I'm saying so, okay. So in playing a, a character that has a non-visual experience, uh, what is that what is that like for you? What's your process like around that? Well, um, it was obviously very important for me to uh, get it right, so to speak, you know, to um, to be as authentic as possible. And I was very fortunate. Uh, not many actors um, get to, hang out every day with the uh, the subject that they're portraying so um ruth was you know instrumental in me um you know learning the process and uh, i would observe her quite a bit and ask her a million questions constantly mm -hmm. she was very patient with me and uh you know so i just basically did my best and um I, you know, I did research as well, you know, watched films and documentaries and stuff with, you know, about non-sighted people. And I must say, when I was a little kid, I uh, was obsessed with the movie, The Miracle Worker. And I used to, uh, <laughs> it's embarrassing now, but I used to play Helen Keller, you know, I used to think like it was so romantic when I was seven or eight, right, to just visualize, you know, to imagine what she went through, it all seemed like, just such an amazing story that, uh, and so uh, sometimes I, you know, me and my friends, we would play that that story 
And um, yeah, so, but uh, really I owe it all to Ruth, anything that I did right. <laughs> I thought Janet did an amazing uh, acting job actually. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I would love to delve into the character relationship. And again, I'm referring to them as characters, although Ruth sort of unpacked at the beginning of this, that this is, you know, 80% your experience. So I'm not, I'm not trying to be dismissive in any way by referring to them as characters, but, um, but the mother and the father in this particular piece and that dynamic relationship. And, and I wonder um, in terms of, you know, Ruth, you sharing transparently about, you know, the authenticity, the knowing, the writing what you know, how authentic that was to your own experience as a young child being in an environment with your parents. Yeah, it was, it was my experience um, as, as much as we can imagine what it's like as infants um, or young children. Um, but most of the details I received for the story came from people who told me things, you know. Um, right. So for example, my father um, told me what had happened to me as an infant. Um, he told me when I was 16 years old because he knew there were people in the community who knew and right. he was concerned that I would find out from someone else. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to make sure that he was able to explain. Um, and of course, you know, it is a story about forgiveness mm -hmm. and it is a story about self-love. Um, I think um, those are the key issues. And it is a story in the end about realizing that um, a, a creative, fulfilling life is more than being able to see mm -hmm. uh, physically. And I, and I hope that people kind of get that picture. Um, but it is so easy to scapegoat, isn't it? It's so easy to scapegoat not being able to see. Um, and that's the problem with everything, right? But, you know, we know that's not true. Um, I'm one of the happier people, happier people that uh, you'll ever meet. And people tell me that all the time. And mm -hmm. so there has to be something more to um, happiness than being able to see. Um, the other scapegoat in my family's history, of course, was my mother, because mental illness um, is so blatant and front and center. Um, but what I realized is that she didn't really have a chance. Um, so to have some great compassion for her was very healing for me. Um, you know, she left all of her family when she was a young woman. Mm -hmm. um, she did end up on this farm where she just worked so hard and it was not her dream. It was my father's dream. Um, but in the 50s and the 60s, you know, women didn't have much to say about what was happening to them. It's very different now. And uh, I think we need to appreciate that context. It was uh, quite a, a, um, an interesting storyline that resonated with my family history as well when I listened to it. And this goes back to my, my, grand, my grandmother's parents. So, you know, turn of the century. Well, I guess... <laughs> the early 1900s which century are we talking about um but uh, but but almost the same thing where where uh my i guess my great grandfather would have emigrated from uh from germany and and had sent for a wife that was sent to him from germany and so they they married without even knowing each other and her history had been that she had you know she was an unwed mother and had to give a baby away before she arrived and all and so she was not happy to be where she was either and so was taken advantage of in that way. So that really resonated with me. I see we have a hand, Ruth, so I don't want to belayer the point. It's Megan. So Megan, why don't you unmute yourself and ask your question or register your comment? Yes. Um, I was wondering, I really, I really, I really like that. Um, I really like that <laughs> shamanic quest. I mean, so see, if I wanted to talk, to do it myself, and I have no fire. Could I just visualize the fire and its ways? An adaptable vision quest. 
yeah, yeah, you know, and that's kind of the, like, what else could I, could I put except fire and twigs? Well, Ruth, you may want to provide some context around a shamanic <laughs> quest as well. Um, yeah. That may so, be led by somebody. Yeah, and I, oh, I, okay. I did a two-year training program, intensive training program. So you wouldn't want to just um, go and try it. You, you'd want to hook up with... Um, with a shaman person. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. gone. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sure for that. that. I'm sure that there are spaces where you can find spiritual leaders to to help facilitate journeys like this, but certainly we don't want to advocate for somebody burning twigs and twigs in their backyard for no, burning no, no, stuff. No, no, no. Yeah. And that's the thing too. Like I wouldn't want to. I, I, I would kind of like make the fire and all of a sudden it gets too too hot and I burn myself easily, you know? I'd be, I'd be careful be, with that thing. Not mm -hmm. a good thing. No, thanks. no, no. Thanks, thanks for the question. Yeah. That's you're, a good you're very one. welcome. We have a hand from Josette. So we'll go to Josette next and then Tammy. Hi, finally Hi. I unmuted myself again. <laughs> Sometimes I have these problems. Anyway, um, I have a few comments. Um, I've read a lot of uh, really good books to do with, uh, you know, shaman, and uh, I believe the author's name is uh, Roger Coldsmith. He's written all kinds of various series of books of, about um, various tribes from the. Um, Native Indian tribes, that is, from the 17 and 1800s, and there was a lot of interesting stuff in those books about shamanship and and how they work, and um, I'm, I'm interested in the supernatural anyway, <laughs> and I find that um, uh, the stuff in regard to the um, um, quest the the uh, spirit quest is very much like what people like psychics talk about um in regard to spirit guides um you know on the other side and so on um the other thing i wanted to mention was i can identify with the character coming from a rural background and being blind myself and i can understand the mentality of you know, not getting further ahead, I guess, uh, living on farms and doing what you do there. <laughs> and my father was alcoholic as well. So there was abuse there. And like Amy was saying, uh, you know, women, women are put in situations that they don't necessarily want to be in, like my mother was. But um, anyway, and I noticed too, that um, in the first part of the play, that Elizabeth was, seemed to be very bitter in some respects. Uh, maybe I just, maybe I was reading into her character wrong or something, but uh, then when the, you know, she was showing, um, going back and doing the review of her life with the various younger characters, uh, she was brought to realize uh, in regard to her parents and so on, forgiveness, like you were saying. What, what uh, comment on that for me, Ruth, um, a bit about, you know, the opening scene where we have Elizabeth and whether um, that was the intent of that was bitterness or just like pure busyness and overwhelm. Or, or you know, she seemed to be a bit, well, I mean, obviously she had all these calls and everything coming through yeah. and that's enough to drive anybody crazy. But um, it, I, I guess may, maybe I read her wrong, but she seemed to be somewhat bitter about her blindness. I could be wrong. Well, I, again, Josette, that's why we got the writer here with us. You can answer this <laughs> yeah, question. So okay. what, thank what do you, you. Think, yeah, thank you, Josette, for the question. Great question. Uh, what do you think yeah. about that, Ruth? Was that, was that an intent or was that, um, you know, a chosen circumstance or? So really, um, the point was that she was burnt out. Right. And just uh, way, way too busy, too much on her plate, um, worried about a lot of things. And uh, I guess when we're bitter, um, 
or when we're burnt out, uh, sometimes it can come across as being bitter or sometimes it can come across as being lethargic or, um, you know, it comes across in different ways with different people. But yeah, um, your call is right on that, uh, Amy. She just really was burnt out and looking for what is, what is going to make my life easier. And so again, the scapegoat thought is, well, if I was if cited, I, it would be easy. Cited, yeah, which is is probably not true. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, to to that point, uh, Ruth is something that it, maybe anybody in this space could comment about. But I certainly can relate with with people cited people in my life, and this is not an attack on cited people. But we live in a cited world, and that's the reality of the situation. Where sometimes I do get comments that are a little bit like you know, how do you possibly get dressed in the morning? How do you cook your own meals? And it's like, really? I put my pants on one leg at a time and I crack an egg and I fry it on the stove. And, you know, I have a functional life, just like, you know, the sight loss piece is inconvenient, but it's not like, that's all it is. You just learn to navigate around it. Um, again, everybody's got their own journey. So let's go to, um, Tammy was the next one, I think in line. And then I've got Marie and I've got Richard. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you, Ruth, for sharing your, I guess, perspective and experience through this this work, because um, there must be a certain vulnerability, you know, uh, attached to that, you know, because it's your, it's a lot of it is your experience, like your actual experience. And um, I think I can relate to a lot of it. And as, uh, I found it very, uh, the play was very, very good, very, um, but I also found that it, um, I think it can raise things for, for us maybe, you know? Um, so I, I, it, yeah, it just, it was just very, I don't want to say eye opening, but <laughs> it's kind of what it was, you know, for me, I think. And I also think that the actors really did a great job of, um, of acting and, and of, of portraying, uh, you know, the, the characters that they were, yeah. they were playing all, all of them did. I mean, I was just amazed at, I mean, Janet, you did a wonderful job. And I think that the other actors did as well. And, and I, and I'm just wondering, I guess I'll end with a question in terms of just, what was it like kind of working with all of the, the actors, um, you know, and, and just, I don't know, like, just what was that experience like? Because, you know, you're trying to get them to to do things that you're envisioning and that you've written and that you're you're thinking in your mind and and to play characters that you know they don't really have. I mean, they obviously don't have the personal like the the experience in terms of the, you know they're not visually impaired or, or blind or whatever you want to you know the term you want to use. So, how, what was it like working with everyone? So, first of all, um, the script uh, was mine. Um, but Phil Wagner was the director. And so he has to be given, you know, a lot of cre credit for um, sort of pulling it all together and helping mm -hmm. to guide, guide people. Um, but, you know, the, the cast were very, and because I was there, everybody was, as I said, um, during um, the opening piece, I just felt so loved, you know, I yeah. really did by that group. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah, and um, they were very careful. And if they had any questions, they would always come to me. But they're just a skilled bunch of actors. And when you have that, um, it's such a gift, you know. And I and I agree with you. I just think um, Janet did a fantastic job, and a, as did the others. And you know, little Beth um, May, she was <laughs> just such a little sprite, you know. It's just they all did so well, but. Um, and I, I just, while I'm thinking about it too, I just want to thank Eileen for the uh, description. She did a fantastic job this evening. I mm -hmm. thought that was really, really great. Uh -huh. And, and yeah. thanks, Tammy, because I just want to say it, it, is, it is a place of vulnerability, you know, when you open yourself up like that. Um, but one of the things I've learned is that, um, you know, it's not the truths that we reveal that are problems for most people it's the secrets that we keep and often the secrets that we keep within homes mm -hmm. that are more of the problems yeah and this is my final needs sorry sorry, sorry. sorry. Ahead, my final my final thought here is 
what was it like hearing like watching the play for the first time you know like all put together because I mean it's all obviously different when when everyone's you know acting and practicing and rehearsing and you're kind of cutting here and there and stopping and starting again what was it like for you to actually hear your um like what you've written and and given the the, the personal nature of it um perform for the first time yeah it was it was really a wonderful experience I have to say I mean I'd had the three readings um New York, uh, Calgary, and Kelowna before the actual stage presentation. And I couldn't believe how much richer the actual stage performance was for me. Um, probably because as blind people, we're aware of movement. You know, you can feel movement and uh, experience movement on the stage. And I really found that that was powerful. Um, and then being in the audience and you're getting the reaction from the people around you. Um, that's an incredible exchange of energy. And so I was very grateful and um, I really enjoyed it. And it gave me that objective perspective that I was looking at because I then did turn the show into a solo multimedia performance that I toured for two years um, from 2017 to 2019. So, but I wanted that objective perspective first and um, they did a great job giving that to me. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks, Tammy. Let's go to, I got a whole bunch of hands here, folks. So just be patient with us. I think Marie was next on the list. And then Richard, then Betty, then uh, Doug and, and Diana. Hi, Ruth. It's Marie Clark, the yeah. sign language interpreter. <laughs> and Janet, hi. It's nice to see you both. And um, it's nice to see so many people um, enjoying the show tonight. I have seen it many times because I had to get organized to actually interpret it. And that was a real honor for me. Ruth, you know that when you first contacted me, I was really resistant because I thought, how is a deaf audience going to appreciate um, something about being blind? And I didn't realize where the crossroads were. And I've seen so many parallels. And I think the last person that spoke talked about the level of trust involved in placing your baby in the hands of a bunch of actors and, and letting them portray your story. And, and Janet, you did a beautiful job of um, bringing that story to life and really honoring Ruth's um, life experience and the way that it was done was just so beautiful and it was such an honor to be part of it. So I wanted to ask you that question about trust because I know the deaf audience, deaf people, when I'm interpreting for them, they sign what they're gonna sign and if they leave it to me to come up with the words and um, I don't know if they trust me or not but they really don't have a choice but to have me there to make things accessible to them and so I try to do that and to never take for granted the fact that I'm putting words to someone else's um, utterances in sign language you know and vice versa so I just was going to ask you about the piece related to trust but you kind of spoke about it. You talked about vulnerability, but the deaf audience really did relate to the experience of, you know, saying, well, what if I could hear, is that what I really would really like? And, and then coming to the point of just accepting your life the way it is, which all of us are kind of, I guess, called to do. So um, just thank you for that. And I know the deaf audience at the end of the per interpreted performance, were all rushing to meet you. And you probably remember the conversation of, of uh, you not being able to see the sign language and the people who were using sign language not being able to hear your voice. So it was a really interesting exchange that we had after that performance in Kelowna. So thank you and thank you, Janet. Thank, thanks for that, I appreciate that, Maria. I, I, I resonate with what you said about um, accepting our lives for what they are. And I, um, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ante up on that one and say, I honor my life. Uh, mm -hmm. for what it is, because uh, I came from a, a, a very visual world to a non-visual world, as, as it happens to many of us. And I have found the gifts in my sight loss that uh, I would not have discovered as a sighted person. So mm. uh, there are, there's beauty and gifts and, and love and all of those things involved in the non-visual experience. Okay, enough of me. Richard, you're up next, my friend. Hi. Uh, so first off, I want to thank uh, to thank Janet for 
for doing such a, uh, an excellent job of portraying uh, the role that uh, she portrayed as a blind person. I, th I thought she did an excellent job with it. Um, for me, I thought um, they really yeah. covered yeah. the journey of self-discovery. I think a lot of people with disabilities might go through at some point in their life. And I, and I, and I thought that was amazing because I, I found myself relating to a lot of points, thinking about the kind of struggles my my parents went through they did not this not the same sort of mental health struggles but uh, the, their own different definitely definite struggles with it with uh, the family dynamics of have a, having a blind child and dealing with other family issues that uh, that every family deals with and uh, that causes uh, um, skeletons in the closet and things like that and 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 I and I I, I was uh, kind of thinking about that but I yeah I I just found a lot of the parts of this play that uh, that it kind of the uh, that I could relate to in in one form or another it was it was quite well done and uh, and I and even that that one instance where the younger version um, uh, when of Elizabeth was going into the bank to get a loan and and they would and they and they just assumed that she wasn't capable as a blind person I I, I had the same exact experience the first time. Uh, that I went to get a mortgage and my brother and I were buying a house together and the lawyer and the bank manager just assumed that my brother was the one going to be dealing with the documents and he had to say to them no he's the one that that just came out of with his business degree he'll probably be explaining it to me after we're done here mm -hmm. so like it's uh, so I kind of like it that's the kind of things that we deal with and it, and it was portrayed so well in play and I and I just hope that more people will, uh, will at some point have it have the opportunity to see this perform some uh, sometime again in a, in a larger city because I think it's really important for the general public to see oh the ableism right Richard the ableism. oh definitely definitely and oh. it kind of brings brings to the point I was attending uh, a session at AxCon today and it was a deaf blind lawyer and she was talking about ableism and how it uh, it transects every everything from racism to uh, to gender discrimination as well too mm -hmm. like the, the ter ableist terms are used in other in other forms of discrimination to discriminate against people of other races or, or against women or people of, of, of other gender identif uh, gender identities that uh, than the, the typical uh, uh, typical male. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Richard. Um, we've got Betty, we've got uh, Doug and Diana, and we've got Marilyn. And after Marilyn, I'm going to draw a line under this, folks. So Betty, you're up, my friend. <sighs> Thank you, Amy. And I want to say thank you to Ruth. I, I'm not normally speechless. People who know me know that. <laughs> I can be pretty articulate, but I, I really think that this was extremely impactful. I wish many, 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 many people could see it. Um, I have to say my favorite thing about the play was not not just the uh, things that were displayed around blindness, but the little Beth. Yeah. I thought it was brilliant how <laughs> she was interwoven into the story and her, you know, the real you is, you know, was her, was her, or the real main character was her spirit, her um, ability to, to live life to the fullest. And, um, you know, when, when we grow up, I think, and become adults, we probably forget that often uh, about our childhood selves. And some of those characteristics, we need to maintain them into adulthood. And I was just so impressed how you, how you brought that into the story. And I don't know. It's. I wish. I wish I could be more articulate and say more. But it was. It, it, it's something that I'm going to need to think about for a long time. But I really wish many, many more people could could see it. And because it certainly does give an understanding of the things that happen to people who are, you know, who are blind. They happen to everybody, granted. But it in a particular way, and and how how we can get up and keep going after difficult experiences and how we can um, you know, remain positive. And of course the ultimate thing, how 
you know, how we can forgive. It's not just, she didn't just forgive her father. To me, the forgiveness was larger than that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's how you intended it, but it just, uh, it really resonated with you, with me. And I just want to thank you so much for uh, this brilliant piece of work. Thank you, Betty. And Betty, if I could just quickly say, man, you hit the nail on many heads. There's many layers to this play. Um, and so it does become difficult to talk about, but the piece about um, the, the little Beth, because that's exactly what the healing was in the end, right? Was her ability to reclaim that young, delightful, free spirit. Um, and that was the coming together of the both of them at the end. So thanks so much for such a lovely, um, insightful synopsis. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Well, isn't it nice to hear though, when an audience member gets it, right? They get it and they've pulled out pieces that, that you intended, but sometimes they pull out pieces that you didn't intend. And you're like, huh, that's a really interesting thought too. And that's one of the wonderful things about art is that we all view it through our own lens and with our own filters and with our own experiences that we come to the table with. And that changes perspectives. One of the things that I love that Janet did, and, and then we'll go to, um, to our next question here. But one of the things that I love that Janet did right off the top, and this is your writing, Ruth, but in Janet's portrayal, Mm -hmm. um, the fact that Elizabeth is overwhelmed and busy is, is like not the stereotype of blind people. You know, people are like, oh, don't you have lots of time? Like, what do you do all day? Don't you have lots of time on your hands? Like you obviously don't work. You know, those are like the stigmas around disability. And right off the bat, you've established that this character is a busy educated, working individual, very functional. And so we ki- kind of flips our, our, our thoughts around the stereotypes around disability that we're all sort of sitting at home drawing disability pensions and that's our lives, right? <laughs> so um, talk a little bit about, about that while we ask um, Doug and Diana to unmute themselves, but maybe Janet, I don't know, do you have anything you can offer around, around how that works as an actor to get that kind of energy that, you know, you're that you're flustered and you're busy and it's it's more than just words there's an intent behind the words that comes through really clearly right well it is there is more than just words but really it was it's the writing that uh, you know allowed the character to come out right um, i'm a big fan of words and um and it, so it really was the writing and of course then the directing as well um, and the pacing. So pacing mm-hmm. has a lot to do with it as well. You know, the timing of, uh, you know, overlapping lines and cutting off and, and that sort of building up to the crescendo. So that really was the script and the director and of course the actors, you know, being able to, to fulfill their, uh, their, their direction and, and their needs. But, and, uh, and to work that out a little bit like, you know, uh, as part of a choir, everybody's got a part to play, right? Right. But also I could relate to that just as a woman and as a mother, a working mother, you know, with kids at home and being overwhelmed in my normal, in my Mm -hmm. actual life at that time, you you know what I mean? Or like Mm -hmm. through most of most women's lives, you know, it's, uh, it's like that um, (laughs) for, for many, many years. So it wasn't hard to relate to her frustration and to, you know, unappreciative children, of course, you know, the, mm-hmm. the kid, I need 20 bucks, I need 20 bucks, give me my money, you know, I want right. some money and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, you know, the phone calls and people wanting everything yes. all the time. So it was, it was pretty easy to relate that way. And if I could just uh, quickly, um, because uh, when Janet and I were talking about doing this uh, Q&A piece, she and I got talking about the um, sign language interpretation that uh, Marie did, which I know was absolutely brilliant. But I didn't realize um, how that was working for you on stage. Um, And can you just talk for a minute about how, how she interpreted and what that was like for you? Well, I was a little leery about it. I, you know, I'd never done anything like that as an actor, and I was, I was a little um, nervous about, uh, you know, what if I turn around and smash into her, and you know, we knock each other over or something like that, right? But uh, she was so good at it, mm-hmm. and I could, you know, I could feel her presence, but it really, it didn't bother me at all. I mean, there was a few times I sort of had to take an extra step or not take a step 
but it was pretty seamless. But also, you know, the way, I mean, I was supposed to be non-sighted. So I kept my eyes as best I could. You know, I never focused on anyone except for those few moments in the play where I was supposed to, you know, when I was supposed to look at little Beth, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, I just, my eyes, I just kept in a soft focus as I possibly could. And I never looked at anybody. So um, it, it, it wasn't that hard. It was, uh, it worked out just fine. And, you know, so like I said, I was a little concerned about it for sure, but, um, but Marie was brilliant. And, and, and not just with the sign language, but her facial expression and her, and her body. She was a, a show in and of herself. She, she really was. Well, I didn't yeah. see that. Sign so. language is a, is a, is a full Actually, bar. It, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's awesome to see it. I mean, I have seen this video once before, but I haven't seen it, you know, several years now. So, um, it, you know, a lot of things, of course, I never saw in the play because I wasn't looking, you know, so anything behind and characters, you know, interacting with each other and exchanging, you know, glances and stuff like that. So it was, it was great to see it again. It was very emotional for me to see mm -hmm. it again. Yeah. Thanks for that, Janet. I'm going to invite uh, Diana and Doug. I don't know which one has the question. I'm guessing it might be Diana, but I could be surprised. It <laughs> might be me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I'm being really careful how I phrase this because I think the play was wonderful and I don't want to review everything that everybody said because there's nothing I don't disagree with. But given that you wrote the play a few years ago and you're, well, no, before I even say that, I want to say I'm I was really impressed with Janet's work and I didn't really notice or care whether she had vision or not. So that is a good thing. But I was wondering, given your theater background, Ruth, and um, working with uh, various disabil people with disabilities, have you ever considered um, doing the play in a space where you could cast people who were visually impaired in those roles? So there were, um, first of all, <laughs> I did, excuse me, <laughs> I did um, pitch this play uh, to many people from the blind community um, to try and fill as many of the roles with um, people who are visually impaired as possible. Um, and there are actually two blind people in the play um, already. So uh, maybe you didn't notice which ones they were, but um, I felt really happy about that. Um, and I also felt good about the fact that the play had um, an intergenerational perspective. So there were seniors, um, Dave Madison, um, you know, did a brilliant job. Um, but it, you know, it's not I don't think he's um, an actor. He's a fantastic musician. And he actually has a very uh, close connection to some Indigenous um, people as well, um, just to put that as an aside. So uh, yeah, the, the answer is I really did. In fact, I went all the way to London, Ontario to meet with uh, Kelly McDonald and his <laughs> theater company to try to get more blind people to um, play in, uh, to perform in this play. Um, but oddly enough, um, they didn't want to have anything to do with playing uh, roles for bl about blind people. They didn't want to have anything to do with that. That was not their interest. So it's such a mixed bag. You never know what you're going to get. But yeah, I, well, I also think it's a different time. Like when you first mm -hmm. did the play and when it came out, there wasn't as much focus on the authenticity of people with whether it's race or disability or whatever, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Um, being in those roles, I mean, if you did it before when you had your, it was just wonderful these people with disabilities were doing that, which sometimes annoys me, but there we go. Right. Um, 
but uh, I mean, it's a different time now. So I can kind of understand why they didn't. And I really, really want to underline that didn't take away my enjoyment of this play or any of the actors' um, roles because they did a fabulous job. But I just thought, put, throw the question out there because it's something to discuss. Sure, and um, you know, keep in mind that um, I was the artistic director of Inside Out theater for 17 years and um most of my actors were people with disabilities and so well that's why i brought up the question actually because yeah, i knew that yeah. background and so and so because i went from inside uh, artistic director of inside out theater to becoming freelance um it was an opportunity for me to expand my artistic wings as well mm -hmm. yeah doing something different well, thank you. That was a perfect answer. And thank you, Janet, as well. <laughs> Thanks, Diana, for your question. Last question goes to Marilyn, and then we're going to host our draw, folks. So stick Thanks, around. Everyone. Hello, Amy and Donna, and Ruth, Janet, and Irene, and everyone. That was absolutely fabulous. I loved it. Janet, I wanted to say that your performance around the um, the incident that happened with the baby was absolutely stunning. I, I felt your pain and your horror, and I could hear that baby screaming. And, and oh my goodness, you that was really, really amazing. And the writing of that scene, Ruth, I don't know how you did that. It was brilliant. I, I wanted to say that my favorite part that to me was a thread that ran through the whole play was that area of forgiveness and letting go. And, and I really liked the throwing the twigs into the fire, each, at least into my, in my mind, it was like representing um, a single incident or a single person where, the, where Elizabeth needed to let something go or needed to forgive. And one by one, those things were thrown away and burned up and gone forever. And then, and then to to for, for Elizabeth to forgive both of her parents, and to me, it's about forgiveness and hope. And boy, oh boy, do people need to hear that! And the only other thing I want to say is, Ruth, if you ever decide that you're going to do this play again, please let us know you're doing auditions. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> there were few people in the in the CCB community that knew about the script but um, boy my uh, circle has expanded exponentially since the pandemic mm. there, there you go silver line. well it was a wonderful evening and I thank you all thank you thanks Marilyn for that um, yeah you know who knows where this might go next and and you never know how you might reinvent the piece or how the piece might be different with different casting those are all discussions as as an artistic uh individual that you get to contemplate and think about for future iterations of this particular project um thank you both a big thank you to ruth bieber big thank you to janet anderson for joining us for the q a we had lots of Question. So we've gone a tad over time tonight, but I want to just, um, I just want to make sure that we get our draw done because that of course is, is a big part of what we do as well. So Ruth, you've been a part of this draw many times. I mean, you witnessed it many times. So I'm going to bring Donna out and anybody on this list, Donna, is there anyone I should just double check if there are all the phone numbers were captured just so that, you know, if you're listed as a phone number or as iPhone or something like that, you, and you're eligible for the draw, you are entered. Yes, thank you, Amy. I do have one number that ends, it's a 604 number, so a local number that ends in 458. And I do have one iPhone. So if either of those people are part of our blind and or partially sighted community and would like to be entered in the draw, now is your chance to let I'm me know. To let us know who you are. Um, Hi, do you have my phone number ending in 2941? Um, who is this? What's your name? It's Ishtar. Yes. Oh, Ishtar, yeah. We've yeah. got you. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, we've got you, Ishtar. No worries. Um, the, the 9458 is Tom Taranishi. Oh, is it Tom? Okay. I, yeah. thought, it, I thought it could be Tom. Okay, great. Let's add Tom. We'll just, we'll just add Tom. Whether he likes it or not, okay. we're adding Tom. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Tom. 
Um, yeah, okay. we, uh, the draw this evening. Great, um, great evening. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Tom, for joining us. The draw this evening, to, so that folks know, is going to be for anybody on the call who's identifying with blindness or partial sight. Um, and, um, you know, we all are coming from different geographical areas. So we'll figure out a way of getting you a prize that is at roughly a $20 to $25 value, uh, depending on where you're geographically located. So uh, we'll start with that. So Donna, any other names that you want to, we had an iPhone, right? Yeah, but I think they, I think they're choosing to remain anonymous. Okay, that's totally fine. Um, all right. Okay, Donna and Ruth. Ruth, I'm just going to let Donna swish those names around and you holler out stop whenever you want her to pull one out. Ho! <laughs> oh, good, like it, ho! Oh, we have an, a new person. It is Catherine. Uh, Catherine Cunningham. Oh, your, your name is Cunningham. Catherine Cunning, Cunningham Houston. Yay! Yeah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have a photo up there, but yes, I'm new to the group, so it's been great. Um, okay. And I just want to acknowledge Janet uh, sending me a note today saying, Are you going to be there tonight or not? Not. <laughs> and, you won. and you won a prize. Yay. Yeah. What are the odds? <laughs> Good to see you, Catherine. Well, well, Captain Catherine is an amazing playwright as well. Wonderful. You never know then. Might be um, an okay. opportunity. You can't see me, but I'm blushing here. So <laughs> something for, for us to experience on this platform at some point. But Catherine, we will um, arrange with you outside of this event to uh, get you your prize. So stay tuned and, and uh, we'll, we'll get in contact with you. Okay, thank you. It's awesome, a pleasure awesome. to be here tonight. Really, it was wonderful, Ruth and Janet. Thank, congratulations to all the cast. It was fantastic. They were Thanks great. Thanks very much for joining. Thank you. Well, folks, uh, my clock says it's 9.08 this evening, uh, Pacific time. I should preface that with Pacific time. Um, and I want to just thank everybody for taking the time to join us for To See or Not to See by Ruth Bieber. And uh, joining us this evening is lead actress Janet Anderson. So thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Um, we will, with our thanks, uh, let people go and enjoy their evenings should they like to. But if, if anybody wants to stick around just for some informal chit chat, totally informal, no, no uh, scheduling or formatting, we'll do that till about quarter after nine. Um, otherwise, I, you know, I invite you to stay. I invite you to leave. I know everybody's had a long day, so it's a uh, player's choice tonight. So, um, hello, Amy. I have a yeah. question. Yeah. I came in, hello. I came in late. Yeah. I had some something else to do. Where would I be able to see this? Well, that is a question that we don't have an answer to just yet. But uh, when we have an answer to that, Maria, I will let you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because there's a, some discussions that we have to have with the uh, with the artist and the creator about uh, where this where this piece lives. Okay. Um, so we we'll work you. on that. Thank you so much. Yes, just my Bible studies don't quite work out the same day, but yes, I would love yeah. to see it and some yeah, of you yeah. that I've missed. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you, ladies. Um, this is Josette here. I'm I'm so sorry. I forgot to thank you, both you, uh, Ruth and Janet, for all a wonderful you know, hard work you've done with this play. I meant to do that when I was commenting on things, but um, never I too late, really Josette. Enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, you're quite welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Uh, oh, good night, Megan. <laughs> yes, you too. Good night. Ruth, it's Louise. Hey, Hi, Louise. How are you? Good. Berkman, huh? it, you know, it, 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 it you know, I was speechless in many ways because it is, it is a story that just hits the heart. And there's so many little pieces that you, you look over your own life and go, as a blind person, go, did I go ever go through any of those experiences? What did I go through that was different? Or how, how, how does blindness change us? And the one thing that when you watch into that bank and, you know, that loan, as Richard said, that just was a moment I fully felt the pain of, of the writing, you know, because it is many times we feel we get treated differently because we're blind. Mm -hmm. And that's the moment I, I think that's the moment I really started crying here. 
Well, I got I got the loan, so. <laughs> but that's not the point. That's not the point. It's a point that we are treated like we can't do anything at times, and that is something that I wish the the world would realize. Whereas we're just human. We're just yeah. people. Yeah. We're no different. Yeah. I won't try to um, make you feel better. I'll just allow you your um, <laughs> to your pain. Thank you. <laughs> another thing, no. people. Oh, sorry. Hey, go, go ahead, oh, Kathy. Oh, um, I was just going to say another people, thing that people like to do is they like to lump all blind people in. If we're, there are several blind people in a room, they like to put them all together, set mm. them all together in, in one little group. <laughs> I've noticed that too. Well, personal, no, personally, no. I like to be with my blind friends in a group. I so do. <laughs> you, you do, but you don't want to sit them to think that's the only people you can create, be with. Right. Too. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah sure. And I think, I, I think that's what Kathy's saying. Isn't it, Kathy? You want yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I got it. I got it. I, I heard your words because I know you well enough. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's, 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 there's one thing to have. I have a choice to sit with your peers and another thing to be told that this is where you're going. This is where you're That's sitting. Right. Yeah. Like we get yeah. told, told that. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Hey, Ruth. It's Nancy. Hi. Hello. Hi. I, you brought good memories back. When I, was, when I was living at home and I asked dad if I could have a loan and he said, no, you're blind. And then he said, if you don't like it, why don't you leave? We just walked down to my grandfather's house. We kept saying that. Why don't you pack your bags and leave? And that brought back lots of memories. You know, you try to do things and you're, you know, you can do it. You don't need to be told, but I just like, wow, that sure brought memories. Especially when you're blind, you don't want to hear that because you, you know, you can do a lot. I still work, but I couldn't get a loan for my mortgage and I did it on my own and I'm mortgage free without, because even if I'm blind, you still can do everything, right? That's right. Good and for you. That, and they, just ever get a, they just don't want us driving a bus. <laughs> that's, 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 always that's, my joke. that's always my joke when i say to people i can do anything well but you don't want me driving a bus but that's fair not yet I can't, I can't not, yet. Not, not yet not yet that's blind. right but the truth is when autonomous vehicles become a thing they won't want anybody driving a bus so it'll be an equal playing field again they'll all they'll want machines all driving buses right that's right that's You're right, right. <laughs> No, you guys did a wonderful job. I hope there's a second part, like another, you guys are going to do something different too, right? Um, no? <laughs> Any plans? I, I beg your Well, maybe, um, maybe I, I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, um, but I think we should be able to share the, um, maybe the link that I think that's what needs to be discussed. Should, that would, yeah. yeah, we'll, we'll, that we'll, uh, we'll make sure that, you know, on the, on the internal vocal eye scape that we discuss that before making any announcements. Exactly. And then um, there's always a post email that goes out about these shows. And so uh, exactly. keep your keepers, no pun intended on those emails, because there may be a yeah. link in there to Ruth's show yeah. or some information about, about where you can get it. Yeah. Hey, Ruth, can I just ask you a quick question? It's Marie. Hey, Marie. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> That wasn't my question, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I, I was just, I just I wanted to ask you what is your biggest challenge as a blind person around being in a world where you know it's COVID and I know for deaf people everybody's wearing a mask so they can't see facial expressions and things so from a deaf perspective that's what I get but I wonder what it is trying to navigate the world and not being able to see at this point. Could you choose just one, Ruth? I mean, <laughs> there's a whole <laughs> list. Well, a whole list. I can name them all. <laughs> I just wonder who comes to mind, you know? And I, you know, I have to say the pandemic has not been as hard on me as most because I'm such an introvert and because I'm so used to resourcing my needs anyway. So mm -hmm. I just had to really, you know, resource uh, in a different way. But I will say that um, probably getting to the winery in the summertime and using a rope to walk with, um, that was a bit tricky because, um, you know, you could still walk side by side, but you don't get any information from a rope like you do from a person's elbow. Yeah. So oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you know, you get there and you have your glass of wine and it's all better. 
<laughs> that's that's awesome. Ben really does help with a lot of things. <laughs> it does. <laughs> At least the rope's a little more stable than the elbow once you've had a few glasses of wine. <laughs> I, I always tell them when I have a glass of wine, I can see. So they get, well, drink more, drink more. I go, no, I really can see when I'm relaxed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but I, I like that, like, you know, I, I have that fear. Like, I, can, I don't want to be blind anymore. And I'm fighting and fighting it. And, and, and they say, just drink a glass of wine. And they'll calm you down. I go, no, but I don't want to be, I want to be like you guys. But then like, like I have to take that step, put the fire on and do this and walk around. But I thought, you know, I've got a girlfriend that's really into spiritual thing and she's trying to do this with me, put the rubs on me, but I could, I don't want to be blind. I I'm fighting it, but I have to accept it now because it's getting worse and worse. And, and I had to learn the hard way. Right. But having a glass of wine does calm me down. It does. Yeah. <laughs> when you, when you slowly lose your sight, um, I didn't start using a cane until I was in my thirties and I've been legally, legally, yeah, legally blind since age six. Um, oh. that, yeah, that slow burn, that slow it's deterioration. Scary. It's scary. Oh, it's and just... I'm still fighting it, but I just feel like I'm now Annoying. getting to the worst part and I want to still do it. And I go, I'm hurting myself. And I said, you know what? Why am I blind? Why? And, and you know, the sad thing is when I walk, listen to it, I go, I, but it's true. I, why am I, why, I don't want to go blind. I, I want to be with my children. I want to see the children grow up and have, have babies. Sure. And, and now I feel like, why me? I should just stop it and just just relax and you know take it easy and not just yeah. take the stress on me right yeah yeah there's only, this pandemic. There's only so many things we have control over yeah and, and yeah. you will literally drive yourself bananas if it you is. try and control something that you have yeah. no control over and, um, and, and just for just for you know transparency sake i guess uh, like because i lost all my sight at once it's not any easier when you lose it all in one chunk than it is when it slowly disappears it's, it's a different kind of transition but, oh, yeah. you but then you have a sister that's blind too and and her is yeah. a suicidal and i'm not a suicide i'm a more of a friendly and helpful person and she's and okay. daddy boils her and i feel like wow what i let dad have her and i'll do my, i'll be independent and i feel good that i'm on my own but sometimes i feel like i'm not that type of girl am i and i look at her and then i look at myself and go, i'm gonna show her better right like <laughs> i'm not a suicidal oh. person i'm a helpful person <laughs> It's a, oh. it's a, it's a trip. It's a trip. It's yeah. scary. <laughs> We're all entitled just, to just our snap your finger journey. and you get everything. Yeah. Well, <laughs> blindness has been, a, yeah. you know, being visually impaired and losing it over the years like I have. Yes, it, it is. It is. Tr <clears throat> but I think if someone gave me and asked me a question tomorrow, would I want my sight back or have my legs to walk as far as I want to walk? I and get rid of my arthritis. I get rid of my arthritis. Blindness doesn't bother me the same as my arthritis does. Yeah. Okay. You know, I have accepted the blindness as a part of life. Yeah. The arthritis is it, painful. It can. It's not just painful. I I have dislocating kneecaps, so not knowing when the next time I'm going to trip and put it one out. Yeah. Yeah. That that unknown is so, and then it can screw up screw up many things in your life. So yeah. to me, the blindness is easier because I, it's stable or as I've lost it, I get to live with it. It doesn't yeah. change. Yeah, that's like when deaf does. I have deaf problem, deaf and blind. And I was going to go get research done. And I said, the, the guy goes, Nancy, what's more important, your eyes or your ears? I said, you know what? Maybe I'd rather use my eyes. No, then I said, no, maybe I'll leave my hearing because this way I don't want to hear my children yell at me, right? But it was just like, I just, I just had to accept it. I bought my condo and I decided to look after my children. I get out, a shelter to live in, right? Forget the research, just deal with their family. Be with your family. So now I'm living with it, enjoying it. Good. Um, this is Jose. I think, again, I, I wanted to share a humorous story that happened to me today. I went to get my income tax down at a senior place and, um, this is in regard to what she said about following the ropes in, uh, you know, in the winery. Well, this um, lady did not want to go sighted guide with me. And, and I said, well, you're going to have to give me specific directions on your, where to go. Anyway, she handed me this piece of material. <laughs> and I wasn't, <laughs> I guess I wasn't on the ball right away, but I said, what's this for? <laughs> and then I realized she wanted 
it was a really long piece of material and she wanted me to follow her with about it. six feet oh. yeah <laughs> about two meters it was, pretty, it was pretty long anyway but <laughs> it was you know I, I i cracked up i laughed about it and she did too she says oh i didn't realize that you might not have known and of course the lady didn't have very good english skills either but she understood and we just cracked up it was funny <laughs> You got to have a sense of humor. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I've had people grab, when I used to use a cane, I'd have people grab the, the tip of my cane and want to guide me that way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think we've all had that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I think the worst one, I think, oh, I was going to say, even at least now it doesn't happen. No one has grabbed you in the middle of the street and tell you you're doing something wrong or, yeah. they, or yeah. they think you can't cross the street because you're blind. You know, I think it today, you know, this COVID-19 has changed the world. I'm hoping when it's over, people won't grab us and think, you know. Think twice, they'll ask first? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. Can I enter your personal bubble? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I actually, I'm actually coming to like the personal bubble. Is that the figuring out we're six feet from somebody? <laughs> Yeah, that's the hardest part, but it, you're right in terms of like crossing the street. Nobody grabs me anymore and just pulls me through because they're afraid I'm going to give them COVID. So, um, <laughs> you know, let's uh, maybe we can capitalize that on an education piece. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Friends, we're just rounding on 925. And so I, I think it's a, a good time to just wrap up our conversation for this evening because we could talk about this for hours and hours and hours. Um, you know, you, you get a couple of us on chin wagging about the blind experience. Um, you know, yeah. it never ends. There's so many, it's try, It's so much fun for me to be in these spaces because you really just get to like vent, right. And share. And that's, that's a beautiful place to be, but, um, somebody has got to, somebody has got to draw this thing to a close or we will be here until next Wednesday. <laughs> Don't chat but, so. but Amy, I did mention your postcard to someone, a bunch of people last week about you, what you did. And oh, the pandemic did postcard. Job. Oh, thanks, Nancy. You, you did, I told them how much you did, how much effort you did for uh, for your grocery store and they all thought it was good. I told them. Uh, as usual, Amy, thanks so much for everything tonight. It was great. Yeah. Oh, thanks, folks. It's always fun to, to be in spaces with you all. I look forward to it every Wednesday. See you next week. All right, See you friends. next week. See you next audio, week. Audio, audio, audio play next week. Just, just if it's, there better be something extra special for two weeks from tonight for my birthday. I know it's your <laughs> birthday. Too. Don't forget my 60th. Oh. I hope I hope you like oh. music. Me? Yeah, I like. It depends what kind of music. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you next week what it is, so we don't spoil, spoil the surprise two weeks in a row. Okay. 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 I gotta say, hold you, everyone. Oh, night. Well, good night, Amy. And I'll be in touch night. next week. Good night. Good night, friends. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. So lovely to everyone. Good night. Good night, Good night, Sharon. Congratulations, Ruth. It was terrific. Sorry? I said congratulations to Ruth. It was great. Uh, oh, thank you. I can't believe you're still up, Sharon. <laughs> yeah, I'm going heading to bed right now. This is definitely she, worth staying up for. Isn't Good she company. amazing? <laughs> you New Yorkers, you know. I how to know, live. I know. <laughs> After this, it's a disco. All right. Good night, guys. <laughs> Good night, Sharon. Good yeah. night. Thanks, Sharon. Yeah. See you. See you Monday. Yeah. Really proud of you. Night, Ruth. Well. we'll hear you Monday. It's Ellen. Oh, see you Monday, Ellen. Thanks so yeah. much, you guys. You rock. Yeah, it was terrific, Ruth. It was really great. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, it's so great to have you. Oh, get some rest now. My goodness. <laughs> now you can now have a, a kind of a sigh of relief tonight, Ruth. I think you'll sleep well. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you for being such a great uh, host. And uh, again, thanks to the Vocal Eye team for making this happen. And um, yeah, Eileen did a great job and it was all, it was all really good. Thank you. Very, very pleased so for inviting you to be part and, of it. And, and yeah, and Janet, thanks so much for joining. That was was so what a great bunch or what a what a fun party <laughs> yeah <laughs> not only about art it's also about community building right so yeah, oh, yeah i had a great time <laughs> yeah. space to do that yeah i'm gonna give you a call okay you, yeah okay, okay. talk good to night. you later thank you everyone lovely to meet you good night janet pleasure being in this space
Yeah, and that's it. That's it. That's all she wrote. So um, people are going to trickle off, and um, yeah, um, and those who can't trickle off themselves will be forced off. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. My staffers in the background. So I'm going to turn my camera off so that people aren't like, oh, she's still talking. It's time to end. So okay. good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Good night. Good night, Ruth.